When the Israelites eventually did reach the promised land, the first thing they were commanded by God to do was to destroy all the altars and images that had been set up there by pagan tribes to honour Baal and Asherah. Once more we see an assistance from God that their camp is kept clean. Holiness is paramount. The fate of the world is resting on these people. Instead of doing so, they ended up turning their back on God and worshipping the idols again. The lure of the gods that surround them and the culture in which they have been steeped keeps polluting and sidetracking God's people, and God is constantly disciplining them and drawing them back into him. The battle between God and Satan for this people group manifests itself as a tug of war, where the Israelites are constantly rebelling and being restored. The determination of Satan to destroy the relationship the Jews have with God throughout the Bible is very clear. They were, after all, fast becoming the last barrier between him and total domination. He wasn't about to leave them alone. And at this point I want to introduce you to an absolutely vital point which will develop in the following parts. I call it Satan's Plan A and Plan B, and it crops up constantly so we really need to get a hold of it. What Satan wants above everything else is domination or control. Now there are two ways to achieve this. One way is considered the feminine way which is employed in a position of weakness. It's called manipulation. If women are to attempt to control their husbands or anyone else, this is generally how they do it. Through tears, hurt feelings, emotional blackmail, etc. The second way of achieving domination is considered the masculine way and it's employed when in a position of strength and it's through violence or intimidation. This is generally how men control people, by threatening them with their strength. So there's a feminine way associated with the moon goddess or Asherah which I refer to as plan A and a masculine way associated with the sun god or Baal that I refer to as plan B. But both techniques are aiming for the same satanic end which is control or domination. Now up until the stage of human history, Satan had always managed to get his way with plan A, subtle manipulation. He appealed to the pride of the angels and a third followed him. He appealed to the pride of Adam and Eve and the same thing happened. After the flood he managed to influence Nimrod and Semiramis and satanic polytheism began filling the earth. He must have felt pretty pleased with himself because in the time period between Adam and Moses, human beings had actually been very easy pickings for him. He'd been able to sway pretty much whoever he wanted, whenever he wanted, without much resistance at all. He never had to go to war against humans in an overt sense. He'd merely appealed to their vanity and offered them the world. In the face of that offer, they had buckled every time. Some more examples of this. When the Muslim prophet Muhammad first established Islam, his initial approach to the Jews was the same. Muhammad tried to be subtle about introducing his false religion into their midst. He claimed he served the same God as them and was a prophet. This was plan A. When the Jews rejected his claims, he turned violent against them and was hell-bent on their destruction for the rest of his days, and this was plan B. When Jesus was in the wilderness prior to the commencement of his ministry, Satan tempted him with plan A. He promised him land, wealth and status. When Jesus turned him down, Satan saw to it that he was crucified. This was plan B. When Edmund finds himself in Narnia in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, the White Witch is charming and polite, offering him Turkish delight and hot chocolate. This is plan A. When Edmund comes to his senses, she goes after him, demanding his life, and she would have had it too if Aslan had not ransomed it. This was plan B. Plan A is manipulation, and plan B is intimidation. These are the two ways for Satan to reach the same target, domination. He wants to dominate the earth. Now up until this stage, Satan had gone with plan A as far as the Jews were concerned. He thought they could be swayed and tempted to follow him like the rest of the world if he pitched it just right. He was wrong. It had won him some battles, but it just wasn't winning him the war. God was determined enough to keep restoring them to him, to keep drawing them back into him and to keep forgiving them, no matter how many times they strayed. And so Satan has regularly switched to plan B. Across the world and throughout history, the Jews have frequently been threatened with extermination, enslavement and persecution. Hatred of the Jews in nations, organisations and individuals is often a telltale sign of Satan's influence behind the scenes.